Shonen is one of the biggest anime genres, even though it's the most misunderstood. Because it's not actually an anime genre, shonen directly translates to boy, meaning that it's less of a genre and more of a demographic. And even though shonen is technically targeted towards young boys, a huge amount of people outside that demographic also consume a shonen anime, making it a pretty useless distinction when trying to differentiate them. For example, Death Note and Chainsaw Man are both published in shonen magazines, making them both technically shonen even though their tones and themes couldn't be farther apart. This makes shonen a very nebulous term when describing anime, but anime fans will still use shonen as a genre, but when you hear this, you can assume that they are usually talking about battle shonen. This is an actual genre because it does consist of shonen anime where the primary focus is on battles, usually with superhuman abilities like My Hero Academia or Bleach. The first modern battle shonen that popularized the genre would probably be Dragon Ball. Examples of great battle shonen that follow in Dragon Ball's footsteps would be Hunter x Hunter or Naruto. Examples of more mature shonen would be Full Metal Alchemist or Death Note. Comedy anime are all about making you laugh, but usually get a bad rep from the anime community for, well, not making us laugh. But it's important to remember that as English viewers, we lose a lot of context when an anime is translated. Sometimes Japanese humor relies on wordplay to inject humor into an exchange, which can often get lost on us. Another gripe anime fans have with a lot of comedy anime is that they'll heavily rely on a single joke, with changes only happening to the surrounding context or situation. But this isn't always a bad thing. Examples of good comedy anime that focus on a single punchline are One Punch Man or Sakamoto-kun. Examples of other good comedy anime that don't rely on a single joke would be Nichijo or Psyche K. Seinen is a much less recognized term to most casual anime viewers, but it essentially just translates to youth, as in it is targeted towards young adults, specifically adult males. Seinen is again not a genre but instead a demographic. An easy way to tell if a manga is published in a Seinen magazine is if they directly use the word young. One of the most widely known Seinen manga, Berserk, was originally published in a magazine called Young Animal which often contains pinups along chapters of the manga. Because seinen manga are targeted towards an older audience, they often deal with much darker themes and storylines. Examples of this are Vinland Saga, where themes of revenge and slavery are prominent, and Berserk, which is personally my favorite thing of all time. <laughs> Sci-fi is an anime genre with a heavy emphasis on technology or futuristic elements, and it is significantly different from western sci-fi. Sci-fi used to be a very popular genre in anime, most likely originating with the anime Astro Boy. However, the golden age of sci-fi is widely regarded to be in the 80s and 90s, meaning that many anime fans aren't well versed in the best sci-fi anime, including Akira, Ghost in the Shell, and Cowboy Bebop. It's worth noting that shows like these popularized the cyberpunk genre across the world which is why I would point you towards cyberpunk edgerunners if you're looking for a modern sci-fi anime. Slice of Life is a controversial genre among anime fans that most avoid because a lot of people find it boring. The general idea of Slice of Life is, like the name implies, to capture a slice of someone's regular day-to-day -day life. It's usually characterized by a much slower pace with more emphasis on what we would consider mundane experiences. Some people think that Slice of Life means no development happens across the series, but that's not necessarily true. Oftentimes, the genre is paired with comedy, drama, or romance. Early slice of life anime that were very influential include Azuma Kadayo, Hidamori Sketch, and Lucky Star. If you want a modern slice of life to enjoy, I would recommend Kobayashi Dragon Maid or Nanan Biori. Romance is another controversial genre because it often takes way too long for anything to actually happen relationship wise, but this can be chalked up to cultural differences. In Western shows, the romance genre isn't necessarily about whether the couple will get together, it's about if their relationship will stand the test of time. But with romance anime, it's more often about if the relationship will happen at all. That's why oftentimes a romance anime will take its time getting the main characters together. There are also many common tropes in which a person mishears the other confession, causing the entire relationship dynamic to be reset. This can be frustrating and personally I hate the trope too, so if you want some good romance anime that still take a while to develop but don't use those tropes, check out Kaguya-sama or Golden Time. If you want a romance anime that's more akin to western TV shows, check out Horimiya, although I will say that I think the manga is better. Isekai literally translates to different or other world. It's technically a sub-genre of fantasy that revolves around a person from our world being transported into a fantasy one. This can happen through many different ways, but in Isekai it usually happens using a portal or reincarnation. While many people think of Isekai as a modern genre, it's actually a very old genre. The idea of going to another world was always a popular one. I mean, think about it, Alice in Wonderland came out in 1865, really the first Isekai if you ask me. But 
But if we're talking about modern Isekai anime, the originator can actually be traced back to Zero Nusukaima, which helped popularize Naruke web novels. If you want to learn more about the history of modern Isekai, check out the video I made on that subject. But basically, Zero Nusukaima fanfiction is actually what inspired light novels like ReZero, which in turn inspired stories like Mushoku Tensei. However, the popularity of adapting light novels into anime really began with Sword Art Online and its huge success, despite the fact that SAO isn't really an Isekai to begin with. Fantasy is a very all-encompassing term for any story with fantastical elements. This means that it can actually include shonen fantasy like Hunter x Hunter or Full Metal Alchemist, but it also includes high fantasy like Freeran. It covers dark fantasy like Claymore or Berserk, but it also covers historical fantasy like Demon Slayer or Inuyasha. While in the West we tend to think of fantasy as mainly just high fantasy, this is because Tolkien's work have been so influential to our art. In anime, fantasy usually takes inspiration from a many number of things, so in a certain sense, you could say that fantasy is one of the biggest genres in anime as a whole, and for that reason, it's hard to give a specific recommendation for the genre. Shoujo is another demographical term and not necessarily a genre. It directly translates to girl, so shoujo anime are more often targeted towards younger girls. Shoujo anime tend to be romances or dramas, but a big subgenre that emerged from shoujo is the magical girls genre, where girls transform into superheroes with magic powers. One of the first examples of a shoujo anime is Sally the Witch, who is technically a magical girl. However, not all magical girl anime are shoujos, as again, shoujo is a demographic and not a genre-defining term. Other important shoujo anime include The Rose of Versailles and Sailor Moon. If I had to pick a shoujo series that acts as a sort of originating point for modern shoujo, I might pick Fruit Baskets or Sailor Moon. But to be honest, as a guy, I don't really watch much shoujo and I'm pretty unqualified to talk about this in particular. So if anyone in the comments has a better idea of what series really popularized modern shoujo, let me know. Anyway, recommendations for modern shoujo that I enjoy would be Yona of the Dawn and My Next Life as a Villainess, which is actually a new subgenre of isekai that involves someone entering the world of a dating sim for women, but as the villain. I also suspect that this villainess subgenre will continue to grow. Jose is another demographical term, but it translates to woman, meaning that most Jose anime are targeted towards adult women. However, like shonen and seinen, the lines between shoujo and jose are very blurry. In fact, the thumbnail for this video uses Nana as a jose anime, but Nana is actually a shoujo anime because it was published in a shoujo magazine. Now, the reason I still put in the thumbnail is because I haven't actually watched any major jose anime, and this is the only mature shoujo anime I've tried. That being said, I can't give any great recommendations, so I'm just using my animalist catalog here, and using that, good modern jose anime to try would be Chihaya Furu and Rakugo Shinju. Sports anime is one of the oldest and long-lasting genres, usually depicting a high school or collegiate sports team and their journey. Because sports anime are very widely based on the sport itself, they are all pretty different, but if I were to point to a show that exemplifies modern sports anime, it would be Slam Dunk. The Slam Dunk manga single-handedly increased the popularity of basketball across Japan, and in the same vein, Haikyuu has done the same for men's volleyball across Japan. These are examples of more more realistic sports anime though, and it's worth noting that there are more unrealistic sports anime where characters border on the line of superhuman. Prince of Tennis and Kuroko no Basket are good examples of shows like this, where characters are pulling off insane moves that aren't usually possible. If you want a good modern sports anime, I would personally recommend Blue Block, although I think the manga is better. Echi is a slang term in the Japanese language that means different things in different contexts. It can be an adjective meaning sexy, dirty, or naughty, it can be a verb meaning to have sex, and it can even be a noun. Where someone is basically a pervert. Echi as a genre is characterized by hypersexualized moments in a show, often dubbed as fan service, where the plot will bend backwards to force its characters in certain positions. Although shows can have a little bit of fan service and not be an ecchi, when a show regularly pounds these scenes to the viewer or places emphasis on the sexual themes in the show, it qualifies as an ecchi. Now it's worth noting that ecchi isn't really a genre you'll find on its own because if you only wanted sexual content in a show then well you might as well watch hentai. Alright guys, I just got these brand new headphones. Mecha is a very old subgenre of sci-fi that's all about giant robots. A big reason that it's gotten so popular is because of the toys that were marketed towards Japanese citizens. In Mecha, there are two main subgenres, Super Robot and Real Robots. Super Robots often refer to supersized, impossible looking mechas, while Real Robots try and match real world physics and limitations. Before Gundam, Super Robots were the most popular subgenre, but Mobile Suit Gundam caused a revolution in the mecha genre popularizing the Real Robot. However, that wasn't the end of the Super Robot genre. Evangelion popularized the Super Robot genre once again. And although the mecha genre is still widely popular, owing favors 
least to superfans who buy and build Gunplas, its popularity has definitely dwindled in the last decade. If you want recommendations of solid mecha shows today, I would recommend you Evangelion and one of my all-time favorites, Code Geass. More modern iterations of Gundam that are supposedly good are Iron Blood Orphans and The Witch from Mercury. The music anime genre is a little interesting, because in the West, many of us associate the music genre with musicals, where characters will break out into song and dance like in Disney movies. But from my knowledge, there are very few anime that are actual musicals, which is probably a cultural difference. When music is heavily used in an anime, it's because the anime's focus is on music itself. So it's better to think of music as a genre like sports, where the main characters are usually involved in making the music themselves. Popular anime in the music genre include Love Live, which started the anime idol trend, K-On, which greatly popularized the slice of life in music genres, and if you want a modern music anime that's mixed with comedy, I would really recommend Bochi the Rock. The harem genre is a subgenre of romance that heavily focuses on polyamorous relationships, typically with one male and many females. Sometimes the genre can be twisted into a reverse harem, where the woman is a main character with multiple male love interests. Personally, I'm still waiting for the bisexual terror that is a mixed harem, but anime is clearly too scared to do that. Harem as a genre gained popularity due to dating simulators, which explains why most harem anime used to be based on visual novels. Most anime fans look down on harem anime because they're pretty unrealistic in portraying how a boring average guy can pull so many baddies, but let's be honest, the vast majority of harem anime is for horny teenagers who want to self-insert with the main character. But at the same time, there are a good amount of harem anime that still use its premise to tell a compelling story, which often leads to something called a shipping war, where fans choose their best waifu in hopes that they end up with the main character, aka some of these people need to touch grass. <laughs> An anime that helped create this trend and caused the harem genre to explode in popularity was Love Hina. Examples of modern shows that have a battle royale of baddies would be quintessential quintuplets. If you want examples of a harem that I think are genuinely good, I would recommend The World Only God Knows and A Hundred Girlfriends, just for being a little more realistic but also fun in the development of all the romances. If you found any mistakes in the video, leave a comment because as much as I've been watching anime, you know, damn near a decade now, obviously I can't watch every single genre the same. And as always, thanks for watching. Peace.